Hello and welcome to FavoritFirm.com. My name is Joe Cortez, former international boxing referee. This past weekend in California, we had a nice heavyweight championship fight. It turned out to be a decent fight, a rematch. Uh, Bernard Stervine versus uh, Chris Ariola was a great fight. It was a rematch last year. Stervine uh, won a unanimous decision over Chris Ariola. He had Ariola die in the third round last year. It went the distance, but this time, uh, Chris Ariola was doing well at the first half of the fight until he got clipped again with that right hand. Uh, Stervain was uh, not in control of the first part of the fight. It was Ariola had, was on the attack on three times the amount of punches that he threw last year, but he was in better condition. He came in at 239 pounds, which is really great. It shows that he was very uh, disciplined. He really was taking this fight more seriously. And he wanted to take this fight so bad, he wanted to be the first uh, Mexican-American to win a heavyweight championship fight. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out for him. Cervini from Haiti is the first heavyweight champion to come out of Haiti. So it was a great fight for him, a great victory. He was very emotional after the fight. I mean, he was laying on the canvas. If you would have turned on the TV at that particular moment, Ariola was standing over him, you would have thought that it was Ariola who knocked out Cervini. But it was just that he was so emotional. Uh, he was emotional doing the interview we did with him earlier at the, at the way the day before. So, uh, uh, you know, his son was in the hospital, his brother's in the hospital, his auntie, his aunt just passed away a week before. So he was very emotional and talking about you know, his history, the past, but he wanted to win this fight so bad, not only for himself, but for his family as well. So we have to congratulate uh, Stervain for uh, the world, uh, the, the great performance he put up Saturday night. He waited, he waited, he was patient. He had his trainer told him he got 12 rounds. So just take your time, pace yourself, which he did. But of course, you know, Ariola was up maybe four, to, four rounds to two, or, or, or up to there about five, five, uh, four rounds to one. It could happen in the sixth round. He nailed Ariola with a short right hand. Uh, Stervain has a great jab. His jab was constantly popping out there, you know, really with good, you know, good uh, speed and, and power behind it. And Harry, Harry Ariola, you know, going back a little bit in the sixth round, he nailed it with that, with the right, after the jab that Ariola threw, he dropped his hand out a little bit too much, and Stervain clocked it with the right hand on the side of the head, and down went uh, Ariola. Jack Breeze, the referee, gave him a mandatory A cap. He got up, Ariola gets up, he gets hit against some more punches, goes to, almost through the ropes, and Jack Reese could have stopped it there, but he wisely gave him a, an opportunity, the benefit of the doubt. As soon as Ariola took two or three punches, the referee, Jack Reese, then jumped in and stopped it, and it was a, a great stoppage. I got to take my hat off to Jack Reese for a job well done. Ariola is going to go back to the drawing boards and, uh, and try to do something, but... Uh, I, I feel that he's had his, his best years behind him, and this was his opportunity. He may have one more shot someplace along the way, but he got to really come back. And, uh, you know, he's uh, 35 years old, so at that age it's a little difficult. But I'm not going to count him out yet. He may have one or two more good fights left in him. You never know. But uh, it was a great fight. The fans were, were very excited. The ratings on ESPN were, were high because of this fight. A lot of good buzz about the results of the fight, so it was a good, good night of boxing this past Saturday night in California. Talking about California, this coming weekend, Juan Manuel Marquez is fighting Mike Alvarado. It's not a title fight, but the winner of this fight is supposed to be supposed to be fighting uh, uh, Manny Pacquiao. And if, if Marquez wins, it'll be fight number five. I remember doing the first fight and uh, that was a hell of a fight when Marquez went down three times in the first round. Had the referee stopped that fight, you know what would have happened? It would have been history for one minute in Marquez. So everybody says, Joe, if you ever made a right call in boxing, it was that night you let Marquez, the Mexican, the pride of Mexico, go down three times and you really could have stopped it. Nobody would have said anything because uh, with your experience, you didn't want to fight it to take unnecessary punishment. You don't, you want to, you don't want to see any fatalities in boxing, but I saw something in his eyes, 
And I said to myself, I'm going to give him an opportunity. And I did. He gets up. He was, he kept, he came back strong in that same round, the first round. And one of the scorecards with the three judges, the next five, six, seven rounds, I know the three judges scorecard ended up with a draw. It was such a, a great fight that it, 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 he, it merited a, a rematch. He got the rematch, another great fight. And I said, we got to do it again because a lot of fans felt that he won the second fight, but the decision went to, Barquet, uh, to Manny Pacquiao. They fought a third time. And I said, man, he beat Manny Pacquiao, but it was such a great fight, but uh, he didn't get the decision. They fought the fourth time. And what happened? Bingo! He hit the jackpot. He caught uh, Pacquiao with a wicked right hand and, and knocked him out cold. So now he felt, ah, I finally did it. I got it. But now Manny Pacquiao comes back after two good wins. And uh, people say, well, he won the championship fight again. He, he beat uh, Timothy Bradley at the rematch. He's now the welterweight champion of the world again. And there's so much buzz about, well, uh, he was to redeem himself after getting knocked out by a woman named Marquez. So if Marquez beats back up around this coming Saturday, you hear a lot of buzz, a lot of talking about the rematch again, Manny Marquez against uh, Benny Pacquiao. So Juan Manuel Marquez is hoping to, to get that title fight. He's 40 years old, and uh, I mean, he, you know, he is the, uh, the, the world champion right now, and uh, Manny Pacquiao is, uh, you know, is a champion as well. So it'll be a, a great fight. Um, actually, Benny Marquez is not the champion, because this, this is a vacant title fight, I mean, it's not a title fight, it's an elimination fight. So that, that means Marquez wins, Mike Alvarado wins, they're going to fight uh, Manny Pacquiao. But now, Mike Alvarado is a tough fighter. Remember, he fought Rosa Privatikov, and it was a great fight, and, uh, you know, Mike Alvarado is all forward. He got the height, he got, he's a decent puncher, hard of a line, he's a warrior, but uh, Marquez, you know, with his experience and uh, his punching power, they're going to make a great fight. I don't think this fight is going to go the distance. I'm not going to pick a winner because it's going to be a good one. But Marquez has the experience and he has uh, you know, fought some of the best. 40 years old, he wants to uh, show uh, the world that he is, uh, once again, wants to get that title uh, that he lost to... Uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather, and then he came back and he uh, lost to uh, to uh, Timothy Bradley that first fight, but redeemed himself and got the uh, got the rematch. So let's see what happens this coming Saturday, and uh, then we have the Boxing Hall of Fame, International Boxing Hall of Fame, up in Canastota, New York, which is June eighth, uh, June eighth. But the night before, you have Miguel Cotto fighting. Sergio Martinez in Madison Square Garden. And uh, it's going to be an interesting fight. Uh, you know, Miguel Cotto is go going for his uh, fourth world title. And if he wins that, that, the middleweight championship of the world, he'll be the first Puerto Rican ever to win four titles in four different weight classes. So he's looking forward to that. Uh, he has a chance against Sergio Martinez. Sergio Martinez is a good puncher, great boxer. Uh, I think Sergio's coming in from a layoff for over a year and a half, so he's going to uh, be fighting somebody who's been fighting on a regular basis, Miguel Cotto. Miguel Cotto, if he uses his, his head right, if he's thinking right, he uses his boxing skill, uh, his speed may be close to, uh, to Martinez. Martinez is very quick with his punches, but uh, I don't know, Martinez is a little rusty. But, you know, not fighting for a year and a half, so let's see what happens on, on June uh, uh, 7th in Madison Square Garden. The next day, the induction in Canastota, New York, Joel Calzaghe, uh, Felix Trinidad, Oscar De La Hoya, Richie Steele, Barry Hearns, the promoter, and um, this uh, photographer, I believe his name is uh, Johnson, uh, 
uh, anyway, but there's a six good inductees, but the, the fighters, of course, you know, Trinidad, De La Hoya, Kazagi, uh, three great fighters, and of course, my colleague, Richie Steele, they all have all deserving of this award. Uh, I refereed Joe Kazagi when he won his first title fight against, I believe it was Chris Eubank, if I'm not mistaken, back in Europe, over like 18, 19 years ago, and I refereed him against uh, Bernard Hopkins here in Las Vegas, and he beat Hopkins, so Joe Kazagi retired as undefeated uh, super uh, middleweight, he was middleweight, super middleweight champion, so uh, he's, he's a fighter that uh, was very well deserving of this award, and one of the few fighters in the history to go to retire undefeated. So, uh, you know, Rocky Marciano was the one who really uh, has that record as heavyweight champion, retired undefeated, Joe Gazaki, and uh, uh, Richard Steele is a, a very world-renowned world re referee. He's doing good things here in Las Vegas with the Richard Steele Boxing Club. He has about 130 kids at the gym. Uh, doing the summer program, they, they feed the kids. Uh, I'm on the board helping them out as well, so we're trying to extend that, uh, the meal program uh, for, to, for three days to five days a week. So keep these kids not only off the streets, but also keep them, you know, with the parents don't have to worry that the kids are four, five, six hours at the gym. They have other recreation activities there other than boxing. They have a physical fitness program, but they also have a nutritional type of a program. They can do after school study, homework type of programs there. So Richard Steele, uh, I take my hat off to you for what you're doing in the world of boxing today with these youngsters. So you're giving back to the community and now you're going into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. So we're very proud of you for what you're doing in boxing. With that said, guys, take care. Talk to you next week.